You always wear black. Oh, I'm unhappy. I'm in mourning for my life. Why? Oh. I, I don't understand why. You're healthy. Your father, he's not rich, but he provides. My life is much harder than yours. I make 23 rubles a month. That's before deductions. You don't see me going around in mourning. Money's got nothing to do with it. Even a pauper can be happy. <laughs> oh, yes. The happy pauper theory. Well, looking at an actual family in practice, there's me, my two sisters, my brother, and my mother, all of whom have to live and eat on those 23 rubles a month. I have to buy tea. I have to buy sugar for the tea. I have to buy tobacco. Ah, oh, it makes me dizzy. Oh, look, the play's about to start. Oh, yes. Constantin wrote a play, and he cast Nina to star. <laughs> they're in love, and tonight their two souls will unite to create a single work of art. Your soul and my soul, however, refuse to unify. I love you. I want you so badly, it drives me here every day, four miles here and four miles back. And what do I have to show for it? Indifferentism. There's no surprise there. I have no money. I already have a family to feed. Who could love a man without means? Nonsense. Your love touches me very deeply. It's just, I can't return it. Oh, take some snuff. No, I don't want it. God, why is it so humid? There's bound to be a storm later. All you ever talk about is money. To hear you think the worst case is poverty when really it's a thousand times better to go around dressed in rags, living from hand to mouth on the street than to... You wouldn't understand. I, I could try. I don't know. What I know is that living in the countryside isn't for me. It's I won't get used to it. Last night, I went to sleep at 10 and woke this morning at 9. It felt like my brain was stuck to my skull from sleeping too much. Not a pleasant experience. So, what happens after lunch? I fall asleep. Another unintentional nap. So now, you can bet I'm just exhausted. And nightmares and all that. You should live in town. No, you can't be here right now. I'll call you when it's time to start. Please, go away. Uh, uh, Basha, would you please ask your father to let the dog off its chain tonight? Uh, otherwise, he just barks all night. And my sister couldn't sleep. Ask him yourself. I'm not involved. I won't do it. Come on. Well, anyway, let us know when it's time to start. 
So the dog will howl against an ice. It's the same story when I live in the country. I, I don't get to live my way. <laughs> I used to get 28 days off, and I'd come down here to rest. But after one day of crap like this, I'd be on my way. The most relaxing part of the trip was leaving here. <laughs> but now, I'm retired, and I, I can't go anywhere else. So, Prince like it or not, I, I... I'm going for a swim. All right, just be back at places in 10. Yes, sir. Now this is what I call a theater, mm. a curtain, ah. two wings, beyond that, empty space, no scenery whatsoever, mm -hmm. just a view of the lake and the horizon. At exactly 8.30, the curtain will open and the moon will rise. Ah, spectacular. If Nina's late, though, the whole effect would be ruined. She should be here by now. Her father and her stepmother keep such a tight watch on her, it's like breaking her out of a prison. Your hair and your beard are a mess. <laughs> we should get you a haircut. Ah. Uh the tragedy of my life. Even as the young, as a young man, I, I, I looked the part of a wino. <laughs> uh, women never loved me. Uh, but, so why is my sister so uh, dispirited? Why? She's bored. Uh -huh. She's jealous. Mm -hmm. She's against me, the performance, and my play because Nina's acting might catch the eye of her novelist. Mm -hmm. She's never read my play, and she hates it. Oh, you're imagining that. She's jealous, because on this tiny stage, <laughs> Nina will succeed. Not her. There's a psychological curiosity. My mother? Sure. Talented, no question. Intelligent. Recites social protest poetry to a drop of a hat. A tender nurse for the sick, really, but don't try bringing up Eleanor Deuce in her presence. No, 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 <laughs> no. You're supposed to talk about her, write about her, praise her. Be transported by the wonders of her acting in The Dumb Alchemy or some similar trickle. Here in the countryside, she can't get her praise fixed, so she gets bored and vindictive. Everyone is against me! <laughs> Everything is our fault. Uh, then she's prone to superstition, afraid of the number 13, afraid to have three candles on the table, and she's stingy. I know she has 70000 in a bank in Odessa, yet you ask her for a small loan and she'll start to cry. You're just upset because you imagine your mother won't like the play. Take a deep breath. Your mother adores you. She loves me. Uh. <laughs> she loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. See? She doesn't love me. She wants to live, and to love, and wear fancy clothes, and here I am, a 25-year-old reminder that she's not so young. In my absence, she's 32. In my presence, 43. Thus is her hatred explained. Also, I refuse to tolerate her kind of theater. She loves the theater and believes her acting serves humanity and the sacred cause of art, while I see theater today as prejudicial and conventional. The curtain rises, bright lights come on, and you're in a wall room with three walls, and behold, the talented ones, the priests of the art, who demonstrate how to eat, drink, love, walk, and wear coats. And then they try to draw some moral from the same vulgar, tasteless scenes and dialogue is a tidy, oversimplified moral. It's useful around the house. You go to the theater and they feed you a thousand variations on the same thing again and again and again, and I have to run away, like remember how Maupassant had to run from the Eiffel Tower because it was so ugly? You've got to have theater? We need new forms of theater. We need new forms, and if not, then maybe we're better off without theater at all. I love my mother. I love her. But she leads her life, running around with that novelist, getting her names in the paper. It makes me ill. Yes, it's a selfish desire, but sometimes I hate my mother for being a famous actress and wish she were just an ordinary woman. Uncle, it's a ridiculous situation to be in. She has guests over, and they're all famous actors, artists, and writers, and I'm the only nobody tolerated because I'm her son! And who am I? 
left university after three years under circumstances beyond our control. No talent, no money of my own, and my passport says I'm not even Russian, just a bourgeois from Kiev. My father actually was a bourgeois from Kiev, but he was also a famous actor. Sort of these actors and writers gather around my mother, one, one will inquire kindly about my worthlessness. That's humiliation for you. I'd like to hear more about that writer of hers, but he, he never seems to speak. He's all right. Intelligent, modest, a touch of the melancholic, not yet 40, and he can have anything he wants about his writing. Sure, there's talent and a charming style, but after reading Tolstoy or Zola, you wouldn't want to read Trigorin. Huh? I love writers. When I was young, my two desires were to get married and to become a writer. Uh, neither wish came about. Yes, I think that uh, even if you weren't that successful, it would still be nice. I hear footsteps. Huh? I can't live without her. Even the sound of her footsteps is wonderful. Nina, my enchantress, my darling, my dream. No, no. <laughs> No. Oh, they have been nervous. Oh, I wonder if they saw them wouldn't let me go. But he just went out with my stepmother, so. But the moon was rising past and the sky was turning red, but I, I drove my horse hard go, so. Now, now I'm happy. Your eyes. Have you been crying? No, uh, no, that's not good. Oh, no, I'm just. I'm still out of breath. <laughs> In half an hour, I've got to go back, so let's hurry. Please, for the love of God, there's no way I can stay any longer. My father doesn't know I'm here. Actually, it's time to start. I better call him. No, I'll go. Uh, right this moment. Towards France walk two grenadiers. Once I was singing that song, and my assistant said to me, Your Excellency has a powerful voice. He thought a moment. Powerful and ugly. <laughs> My father and his wife don't want me over here with the Bohemians. Oh, they're afraid of me becoming an actress. Oh, it's the lake that attracts me, like a seagull. Now I'm happy with all of you. Well, oh, there's someone over there. There's, there's no one. Oh, what kind of tree is that? A ginkgo. Why is it so dark? Because at night, everything gets dark. Don't go so soon. Stay with me. I can't stay. Then I'll go with you and I'll stand under your window all night long. I can't. There's a watchman. That's a robot. He isn't used to you yet. <gasps> I love you. Is that you, Yakov? Yes, sir. Have you got the methylated spirits in the sulfur? Yes, sir. When the red eyes glow, we'll need the smell of sulfur. Yes, sir. Go on. Hmm. Everything's ready for you. <sighs> nervous? Very nervous. Anyway, your mother's all right, but that Trigorin's here. Is he young? He is. Those wonderful stories he writes. I wouldn't know. I've never read them. <laughs> well, it's not easy acting in your play. There are no living people in it. Living people? I don't show life as it is or life as it should be. Only life as it appears in a dream. <laughs> but nothing happens in your play. It's all one long speech and I think every play needs a love interest. Evening air gets damp. Go back in and put on some more clothes. I'm hot enough as it is. Oh, you don't take care of yourself, you stubborn pig. As a doctor, you know the damp air is bad for you. But you want me to suffer. So what happens? Last night, you deliberately sit the whole evening on the veranda. 
Say not, youth was uh, wasted. Transported by the sparkling conversation of Irina Nikolaevna, you failed to notice the cold. <laughs> Admit it. You're infatuated with her. <laughs> I am 55. Chuck, 55 is an old for a man. And you're beautifully preserved, which is why women everywhere are attracted to you. <laughs> I say not, my love, I stand before you enchanted. <laughs> People love actresses. Yes. They are naturally drawn to them over shopkeepers. People seek the ideal. Well, that could certainly help explain why women constantly fall in love with you. <laughs> no. I've been with a great number of women, and I have had great relationships with almost all of them. Mostly, they are attracted to my being a doctor. You remember 10 or 15 years ago, I was the only decent doctor in the county delivering babies. And I was always honest with them. Darling. Quiet. The others are here. It was 25 years ago, at the Poltava Fair, 1873. I saw her give the most exquisite performance. Oh, she was ravishing. What acting. Oh, and that comic, Pavel Shadin. Oh, you must remember him. Oh, truly the best Raskliev in my experience. Better than Sardovsky, madam, I swear to God. Where is he now? You always ask after these oh, prehistoric <laughs> actors. How should I know about any of them? Ah, Pavel Shadin. Now there was an actor. You don't see his like nowadays. They were mighty oaks back then. And I'm afraid we've only stumps left. <laughs> of course, geniuses are rare these days, but overall, acting has improved. No, no, there I disagree. Though it is a matter of taste, De gustibus ot bene ot nihil. When do we start, dear? In a minute, please, be patient. Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turnst mine eyes into my very soul, and I see there such black and grained spots as will not leave their tinct. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an insipid bed, stewed in corruption, honeying and making love over thy nasty sty. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to begin. I begin. O oh, venerable ancient shades who haunt the mists above this lake, lead us into the arms of sleep where we may dream of what will be in 200,000 years from now. In 200,000 years, there'll be nothing left. <laughs> then let the shades show us that nothing. Yes, please, the magic is making us sleepy. Lions, eagles, and partridges, the antlered deer, the geese, and the spiders, the silent fish who dwell in the sea, and the starfish and creatures invisible. All living things and life itself, all living things have come to an end, their sad, allotted rounds complete. For over a thousand centuries, Earth has been lifeless, no single creature yet remains, and the pitiable moon has lent her land to no avail. The cranes no longer wake in the meadows with their cries, and the linden groves no longer hum with the flight of beetles. All is cold, cold, cold. All is hollow, hollow. Terror, terror. The bodies of all living things have returned to dust. Satan, the father of eternal matter, has transmuted them into stones and water and clouds, and all their souls mingle as one, I am that universal soul. In me are united the souls of Alexander the Great, of Caesar, and Shakespeare, and Napoleon. As well as that is the lowest creeping worm, I fuse together the consciousness of man with the animal instinct, and I remember it all. All, every life ever lived, now lives in me. And she is symbolism. Mama. I am alone. Once every hundred years, I 
open my mouth and my voice resonates across the void, a plaintive cry unheard. <laughs> Even you, Hellfires, you cannot hear me. For you were born before the day in an evil swamp and wandered earth until dawn, lacking thought, lacking any vibration of life. For fear of life's reemergence in you, he kicked all out of the buzz and endless interchange, just as stones and water never rest nor remain the same in all of the universe. Only I remain unchanging. <laughs> then, matter and spirit will merge in splendid harmony and so begin the reign of a universal will. Yet, that moment will only arrive gradually, drop by drop, after many thousands of years, after moon and sun and brilliant Sirius have long since turned to dust. But until that time, horror. Horror. <laughs> See? He approaches Satan, my mighty enemy. There I see his crimson eyes. I smell sulfur. Is that intentional? Yes. <laughs> Special effect. Mama. <clears throat> Satan mourns the absence of humanity. You took and your look. hat off. Put it back on or you'll catch a cold. The doctor has very civilly thought to remove his hat in the presence of Satan. Father of eternal matter. <laughs> That's it! The play's over. Close the curtain. Close the curtain. My sincere apologies. I forgot only the chosen few may write plays or act in them. There's no sense in breaking that one up. I feel... I just... Constantin, really, Irina, you shouldn't talk to him like that. He has his pride. What did I say? You, you offended him. Oh, he said himself his play was only a joke, so I laughed at his joke. Nonetheless. Oh, it turns out he did not write a joke. He wrote a masterpiece. Oh, the entire sulfur extravaganza was written and staged as an object lesson for us in how to write and how to act. And the lesson bored us. Why these constant attacks and snide remarks about me? You know I don't care what you say. <laughs> it's enough to try the patience of a saint. He's just a petulant, conceited little boy. You mean he did this to please you? Oh, really? And yet he did not select an ordinary play, but instead forced us to sit through this symbolic garbage. Oh, for the sake of a joke, I'll happily sit through garbage, but what is all this pretentiousness? New forms, new art for a new age. I don't see new forms, just bad manners. Everyone writes the way they want. Yes. As best they can. Oh. Yes. He is welcome to write the way he wants as best he can, as long as I don't have to sit through the performance. <laughs> Jupiter! Thy anger. <laughs> I'm not Jupiter, I'm a woman, and I'm not angry. I, my annoyance is derived from the thought of this young man frittering away his time on this nothing. I didn't mean to insult him. Where, where is this supposition that spirit is separate from matter? I mean, for all we know, spirit could be like an agglomeration of atoms. Somebody should write a play about school teachers and the difficulties of their lives. That could be stage work. There's your next play. This may be true, but and let's not talk theater teachers. or atoms yes. tonight. Hmm? The sky is glorious. I hear singing. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, lovely. From the far side of the lake. Oh. Come sit by me. Hmm. Ten or fifteen years ago, there was music and singing almost every night around this lake. On this shore alone hmm. were six big estate houses. Oh, I remember the parties and the laughter. People were always shooting guns off during the night. <laughs> and love affairs, endless love affairs. Hmm. And guess who what played the romantic lead in all six houses? Hmm. Dr. Yevgeny Dorn. Oh, yes. Oh, he's fascinating now. But back then, oh, la la. Mm. <laughs> oh. oh, my conscience is acting up. Why did I have to be so rude to the child? Oh, there's a something. Oh, and now I'm worried. Kostya! Kostya, my son! I'll find him for you. Oh, oh. would you be so kind? Kostya! Like we 
won't be going on, so I might as well emerge. Uh, bravo, bravo. Yes, indeed. Bravo, bravo. We all adored you. Yeah. With your looks and that beautiful voice, it's criminal for you to molder here in the countryside. There's talent in this girl. You must go on the stage. That is my dream, but it, it won't happen. Oh, who knows? <laughs> Let me introduce you. This is Boris Alexievich. Oh, I'm very honored. I've read all of your work. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed, dear. He may be a celebrity, but he has a simple soul. You see how he's embarrassed, too. <laughs> There's something sinister about that closed curtain. Yakov! Yakov, open the curtain, will you? <sighs> Wasn't that a strange play? I didn't understand anything, uh. but I did enjoy watching. You acted with such sincerity. Sincerity. And the scenery, beautiful. Mm. There must be a lot of fish out in that lake. Oh, yes, I expect so. I love to fish. Nothing gives me more pleasure than sitting on the dock and watching the float bob up and down. Well. Surely, once you've experienced the pleasures of creating art, nothing else can compare. Oh, you mustn't talk like that to him. When people discuss art, he always clams up. You know, I was in Moscow at the opera years ago, and the famous Basso Silva, he hit a low C. Uh, now, later in the same evening, the bass from our church choir was in the second balcony, and suddenly you hear him sing out, Bravo, Silva! The whole octave lower. It was like this. Bravo, Silva! The whole theater was silent as a tomb. The angel of silence must have flown over us. <laughs> well, it's time I was going. What, where, where? We can't let you leave. Uh, oh, my father's waiting for me. Oh, that father. Mm -hmm. Can't. Uh, Nothing for it. We hate to let you go. Oh, if only you knew how hard it was to leave all of you. Someone should see you home. Oh, no, 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 we'll just have some walking home. Well, please stay. I can't, Cousin Nikolaevich. Oh, for, for one hour only. I can't. So unfortunate. That girl, apparently, the father died and left the, no, the mother. The mother died, left an enormous fortune to the father. He's willed it all to the stepmother, and that girl won't have a penny to her name. No. Mm, it's a scandal. No. Give the father his due. He's a pig! Can we go inside now? I'm, I'm, I'm getting a chill from the damp air, and my, my legs ache. Oh. Uh, he needs to walk. You step as a bore. Oh, oh, come on, you poor Get him darling. walking. He'll be fine. Oh, there's the dog barking again. Please let the dog up its chain tonight, Shamray. It's impossible, Pyotr Nikolaevich. He needs to stay at the barn to guard against thieves. All my millet's stored there. Who's going to steal the millet? A whole octave lower. And he wasn't even a real singer, just someone in our church choir. Maybe I'm crazy, but I liked that play. There was something to it when that kid was speaking about loneliness. And then the devil's eyes appeared. It was new, different. Everyone's gone. I'm still here. I can't stand Masha. She follows me everywhere. Constantin. I liked your play. Uh, it was strange, and of course, we didn't get to hear the ending, but it made a powerful impression on me. You are a very gifted young man, and you should keep writing. <coughs> oh, oh, why so upset? What I mean to say is, um, sure, you took your subject matter from abstract ideas, as you should for art should express our highest, greatest ideals. Art is a serious matter. 
Why are you so pale? You're saying I should keep writing. Yes, but only address eternal serious topics. You know, I've had a decent life full of great variety. I've enjoyed my time and I am content. But if I could ever have the experience of creating artistic expression, why, I would throw off this personal material and fly off into the Empyrean. Where's Nina? She went home. What am I going to do? No, I, I have to see her. I'll catch up to her. Oh, calm down. No, I no. have to go. I don't have a choice. Constantine, you should go back to the house. Your mother's waiting for you, and she's upset. Then tell her I've gone. And please, everyone, leave me be. Don't follow me around. Kostya, this is no way to behave. Goodbye, doctor. I'm very grateful to you. Ah, uh, you. <laughs> You know, that's what people say when they don't know what else to say. Ah, youth. That's disgusting. <laughs> I hear music in the house. We should go in. Wait. Wait? What for? I have something to tell you. I need someone to talk to. My father, I don't love him, but somehow I feel I can trust you. <laughs> Why is it that I feel we have something in common? Look, I just feel like, I feel like, help me, help me before I do something foolish. I can't stand it. I'll ruin my life. Uh, I, what, what can I do to help you? I... I'm unhappy. Yes. No one knows how unhappy I am. I love Constantin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're all so very sensitive, <laughs> so oversensitive. It's the magic of the lake. It is strong. How can I help you, my child?
Let's stand side by side. So, you're 22. Yes. I'm nearly twice that. Yevgeny Sergeyevich, which of us looks younger? You do, of course. So, why is that? <laughs> it's because I, I think, I move, I feel, I live. Well, you remain rooted to your spot and haven't really lived. Also, I have a rule. I never think about the future. I never think about old age or, or death. What will be, will be. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like I was born a very long time in the past. My entire life trails behind me like like an enormous train on my dress. Often I don't even want to go on living. <laughs> but I should just throw that off, get myself together. Huh? Taylor How ridiculous. Of love, also, flowers of mine. Also, I'm as proper as an English lady. I stay in training, okay. as they say. And I'm always dressed, and I have my hair done, come il faut. Can I be found beyond the house, even down to the garden with my hair down or in a dressing gown? Certainly not, which is why I look so young. There's nothing dowdy about me. I haven't let myself go, as some women do. Hmm. Look, look, light as a little bird. I could play a girl of 15. Uh, perhaps I should continue with our reading. Uh, we left off with the grain merchant and the rats. Oh, yes, the rats. Pray continue. On second thought, so, I will read. Mm, Here, I it's guess, my turn. Yes. It's my turn. Oh, uh, yes, rats. Here we are. Clearly, it is as dangerous for people to pamper and lure novelists into their homes as it would be for a flower merchant to raise rats in his granary. And yet the practice enjoys a vogue. <laughs> when a woman has fixed her desire upon the particular <laughs> writer she wishes to acquire, she lays siege to him with compliments, attentions, and other indulgences. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, yes. If we are speaking of French women, I have no doubt this is the case, but not us. A Russian woman, if she is trying to seduce a writer, is probably smitten to the toenails herself. Mm. Take any example at random. Mm, take myself and Trigorin. <laughs> Are we very happy? Are we very happy? Today we will enjoy ourselves. Father and stepmother have gone off to Tiber, and we are alone for three whole days. <laughs> I, I am happy. Now I can be one of you. Uh, isn't she pretty today? Yes. Yes, elegant and well-dressed. You're clever at that. But we mustn't pay her too many compliments or we're liable to bring the evil eye on the child. Where's Boris Alexievich? Oh, he's fishing at the lake. Mm. I wonder he doesn't get there. Mm -hmm. Oh, what are you reading? Oh, oh. Maupassant, darling, on the water. But what comes next is neither interesting nor true. <laughs> Become my nerves. Oh, tell me, what's wrong with my son? I, he spends whole days on the lake. I never see him. He's sick. In his soul. Um, Nina. Mm. Would you mind maybe reciting something from his play? Oh, what for? So uninteresting. Oh. Well, when I've heard him read his work, his face and eyes burn with emotion. His voice is beautiful and sad. The voice of a real poet. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Patricia. Oh. Were you sleeping? Oh, certainly not. <laughs> You haven't been taking your medicine. Poor 
I'd like to take my medicine, but the doctor here won't prescribe. Medicine? At 60 years of age, medicine won't help. Uh, even 60-year-olds want to live. <laughs> so take an aspirin. Take two. Patricia needs a rest cure mm. at a spa somewhere with mineral water. So he can drink mineral water. He cannot drink mineral water. Anything is fine. What do you mean? Just as I said, everything is clear. Pyotr Nikolaevich should stop smoking. Oh, nonsense. Uh, no, that I can agree with. Ugh. Alcohol and tobacco diminish your individuality. After a cigar or a shot of vodka, you stop being Pyotr and begin being Pyotr and someone else. You stop being the real you. Uh, that's easy for you to say. You've had an interesting life. <laughs> Me? I worked for 28 years in the Department of Justice without ever actually living. I finished life with no experience, so understandably, I am desirous to live. Since your life has been rich and varied, you can afford to be philosophical and leave things be. <laughs> but I still care. That's why after dinner, I drink sherry and smoke a cigar, and so on and so on. You know this. Hey, live and live seriously mm. by all means. But uh, at 60 years of age to go on about going to a spa or lamenting on a misspent youth <laughs> just seems silly to me. Uh. Well, I guess it must be time for lunch. My foot's asleep. She will be two drinks in before we get to the table. You watch. <laughs> Life's been hard on her. Oh, that's meaningless. Oh, says the man who's had everything. Says the man who has everything. Oh. oh, this is my kind of tedium. It's hot. Everyone rolls out the philosophy. I'm happy to be with you. I enjoy being with you and I love listening to you, but if I could be alone in an empty hotel room, memorizing a new role, that would be bliss. Oh, yes. I know exactly what you mean. Hmm. Well, that goes without saying. A life in town is uh, categorically better. Uh, you could have your own office. <laughs> People don't bring, break into to you without permission. <laughs> so you know, a, a telephone uh, on your desk. Uh, and getting around is as easy as hailing a cab and so on and so on. And so Teller on. of love, flowers of mine. Ah! Ah! Here you are. <laughs> Must Good he afternoon. Scream every time he Wonderful comes into anywhere. To see everyone is in good health. <sighs> My wife oh, informed yes, me the two so of you are time. planning a trip into town today. Yes, that's the plan. Yes. I see. Blended to hear. Hmm. How to put this exactly? By what means were you planning on taking, <laughs> dear lady? We are harvesting the rye today, and all the men are working, as are all the horses. Oh. What horses were you planning horses, on right? taking? What horses? How should I know what horses? Yeah, we do have carriage horses. Yeah. Carriage, carriage horses! horses. Mm. And where am I to find harnesses for them? Harnesses, oh, you hear? The oh, astonishing! Beyond belief! Adam, I bow to your talent. You have my utmost esteem. I'll give you ten years of my life but I can give you no horses. This is utterly ridiculous. What, I have to go to town. My dear Adam, do you have the slightest notion of what it takes to run this farm? Oh, the same story, for God's sake. If that's the way it is, I'm leaving. <laughs> we return to Moscow today. Have them hire horses for me from the village or I We'll walk to the station! Fine! Have it your way. In that case, I quit! Oh. Find yourselves a new manager! But every year the same insult! Oh. I hope never to return! Every and I, I just... <laughs> Such evidence! 
What the hell is he talking about? I'm at the end of my rope. Tell them to bring the horses around immediately. How could he refuse her? She's a famous actress. This is unconscionable, unbelievable. And any wish of hers, any capricious desire is more important than this farm. What can I do? If you were me, <laughs> what can I do? We must go to my sister and beg her not to leave. Yes. We will all beg yes, her. Sorry. Agreed? Yes. Agreed? <laughs> you know, such <laughs> impudence, yeah. such yeah. a yeah. tyrant. Yeah. She's yeah. a... Oh. Get him his, yeah. uh, uh, Get his feet up. Get some water. Get some, some aspirin in my medicine bag. Get him... People are boring. By all rights, your husband should be out on his ear. Well, yeah. The outcome of this, however, will be Pyotr Nikolaevich, the old woman, and his sister begging for his forgiveness. You watch. Oh, he sent the carriage horses out to the fields along with the rest. Every day is a new misunderstanding of the same sort. Oh, God, I get so upset. I feel Sorry. sick from the strain. You see? My handshake. <sighs> oh. He's so rude. Yevgeny, yes. my dear, darling, beloved, <laughs> take me into your home. Our moment is passing by. We are no longer young. And if perhaps now at the end of our lives we could stop deceiving and lying. I am 55 years old. It is too late to change my life. Oh, I know you refuse me because there are other women close to you. You can't harbor them all. I'm sorry. You're tired of me. No. No. Not at all. You know I'm jealous. Naturally, as a doctor, you can't avoid women entirely. <laughs> I understand, suppose. Uh, how are the others inside the house? Oh, um, Irina Nikolaevna's crying and Pyotr Nikolaevich is having an asthma attack. <sighs> we shall go in. They're going to need some aspirin. <laughs> oh, wait. These are for you. <laughs> Merci. Yeah. What pretty flowers. Give me those flowers. Give me those flowers. <laughs> How strange it is to see a great actress weep over nothing at all. And even more strange to see a great writer. I mean, everyone knows his art, his name is on all the papers. And his nearest desires to fish. <laughs> the pride he felt today when he caught a few perch in the lake. I thought famous people would be serious and aloof that they would disdain publicity and use the reputation to get back at the world for putting such value on wealth and birth. But no, they cry and go fishing and laugh and play cards and go mad, just like all of us. Are you alone? Yes, I'm alone. What does that mean? I did something reprehensible today. I killed the seagull. Allow me to lay it at your feet. What is wrong with you? Soon I'll kill myself the same way. I don't know you. Yeah. Ever since I ceased knowing you, you don't act the same towards me. You look through me with cold eyes and my presence embarrasses you. The slightest thing set you off now. Everything you say is veiled with some kind of symbolic language. This seagull is clearly a symbol for you. I'm sorry if I don't understand what you, what you mean. I'm too 
simple to understand what you mean. It all started on the night of my play's stupid failure. Women don't forgive failure. I burned every page of my manuscript. If you could only see how unhappy I am. Your cold eyes frighten me. I've woken up to find the lake has evaporated. The lake it leached away into the earth. Are you too simple to understand me? What is there to understand? My play failed to please. You despise my inspiration as commonplace, devoid of value as so many others do. I certainly understand that much. I understand that much like a nail driven through my brain! Damn my servant vanity and the blood it sucks from my heart. Behold, the real master, ambulating about like Hamlet, even armed with a book. Words, words, words. His sun rises, his rays shine close. And already, your face has melted before his warmth into a smile? I won't get in your way. I won't. Enough. She drinks a lot. She's always wearing black. <sighs> School teacher's in love with her. Buddy Alexievich. Hello. Good afternoon. <laughs> Some unanticipated events means that we will be leaving today, or so I gather. Mm. And before you and I have had a chance to get acquainted. Such a shame. I so rarely get the chance to meet interesting young girls your age. So much that I forget what you are like. I can't think back to being 18 or 19. And therefore, the girls in my stories, they, they always ring false. I'd love to be in your shoes. For an hour, just to learn how you think, how you feel, and how you generally are. And I would give anything to be in your shoes. Why? To know what it's like to be a talented and famous writer. <laughs> to know how you feel and experience being famous. How? That's hard to say. I, I never really think about it. You might be overestimating my fame, or, or else there's no feeling of the kind. I, I certainly don't feel anything. Well, what about when you read your name in the papers? Good reviews, they're fine. Bad reviews, I'll be in a bad mood for a day or two. It's a strange world. Yeah, I'm deeply envious of you, you know. Hmm. We each have a different faith, and some people hardly manage to keep body and soul together through a mm -hmm. tedious, anonymous existence. Each one, like every other in the crowd, is unhappy. Hmm. Others like you, for example, receive the gift of an interesting, meaningful life. You have happiness. Hmm. I do. Hmm. You're talking about fame and happiness of a bright, interesting, meaningful life, but those words, those words are meaningless to me. I'm sorry, but they're like gumdrops, and I don't eat gumdrops. <laughs> You're very young. You're very sweet, but I must be going now. Your life is beautiful. How is that? I need to go right. Please forgive me. 
I just don't have time. <laughs> oh. You stepped on a sore spot. I'm afraid it made me upset, angry. So you would like to talk. Mm -hmm. Fine, let's, let's talk, shall we? Let's go through my brilliant and interesting life. <laughs> Where should we begin? Okay, you know how some people, they obsess. They obsess over a thing or an idea, like the man who spends all his time thinking of the moon. Mm -hmm. I've got such a moon. <coughs> I must write. I must write. I must write. I'm obsessed with writing. No sooner have I finished one story than I've already started a second, I started a third, and a fourth. I write continuously as if writing in relays with the postal horses. It's really the only way I know how. Tell me, does that strike you as bright and beautiful? No, no, no. Mad. Mad is a more apt description. <laughs> yes. Mad. Even now, I can't get out of my mind the fact that I have a story that's waiting to be finished. Mm. A cloud, I see. And it's shaped like a grand piano. I think somewhere in my story I must mention that a cloud passed by shaped like a grand piano. Heliotrope, you smell it, but I think make a note. Widow's color. Use when describing a summer's evening. This whole conversation, every word that we speak, I lock up in my brain somewhere for future use. <laughs> now when I get done working, I, I go to the theater, or if I'm lucky, out to the lake so I can fish. And I just try to rest and try to forget. But what do you think happens? There's an iron cannibal that just rolls around in my brain with new plot lines, new ideas, and it waits for me on my desk. It waits to be shot off. So I rush back to write, to write. And so it remains. I have no rest for myself. I devour my own life making, making honey for others. I rip the flowers up from my own garden. I, I tear them out by their roots. Surely I am insane. My friends and my family, they, they certainly treat me as such. <laughs> what are you working on now, they ask. And it's always the same. And sometimes I wonder if all their praise and all their adulation is somehow a delusion that they're stringing me along in the hopes that I am sane and in all reality I am not. And then one day they will they'll sneak up behind me and carry me out to the madhouse. <laughs> And what about, what about my early years? When I was young, I could have enjoyed my youth and myself, but no, writing. Writing was sheer torture. Unless you're lucky, the life of a beginning writer is the life of a pariah. You're obsessed with famous writers, successful artists. You end up at parties mingling about, always unnoticed. You don't have the gumption to even look them in the eye. It's like being a gambling addict without even a penny. Now my vision of readers, not that I know, but I picture hostility and indifference. The sheer panic I feel when a new play of mine opened to the theater public. I imagine that opinion was divided by those with dark hair, hatred, and those with light hair, indifference. That's my brilliant and interesting life. Yes. Don't, don't you get satisfaction from the moment of creation? A moment of, of ecstasy and bliss? Yes, I, I enjoy the writing. I enjoy reading proofs. Uh -huh. But the minute that something is published and I see the mistakes, I see what went wrong. It should never have been written in the first place. Oh, I feel so miserable, but public. They, they managed to stomach the trite. Oh yes, well turned. The man has talent. Not on Toy Story's level, naturally. <laughs> well, finely crafted, though. Not as good as Turgenev's fathers and sons. Until the day I die. The commentary will be very nice. Very nice. At my funeral, my friends, they will walk past my grave and say, here lies Tregorn, a good rider but not as good as Turgenev. <laughs> there, I must respectfully disagree with you. You've been spoiled by your success. Success? What success? 
I've never been satisfied with my writing. I, I don't like being a writer. <laughs> and by far the worst. So when I'm inspired to the point that I am in a daze and I, I don't even know what I'm writing about. No. What I truly love, I truly love is the lake. I love, I love the countryside. I love the sky. It's nature that sparks me. It inspires passion within me and it gives me a true desire to write. But I can't simply remain a landscape painter. I am also a citizen. I love my country and I love the people of this country. So I feel if I, I must write, then it's my duty to write about them. I should write about their suffering. I should write about their rights. I should write about the progress of science. Oh, and as I hurry to do this, out from every corner, they, they come out to criticize and attack me like a pack of vicious hounds after a fox. So that as life and science, they, they continue their advances, I, I fall behind, pinned to the earth, so that finally I believe I can only write landscapes. Everything else is false. You work too hard. It just takes away your sense of who you are. I mean, even if you don't like yourself, we all love you. If I were a famous writer like you, I'd give my whole life to my readers, knowing that they would achieve happiness by reaching up to my image and pulling my chariot in the streets. <laughs> a chariot. And who would I be? Agamemnon? <laughs> well, for the joy of becoming a writer, an actress, I would endure poverty and yes. rejection, disappointment. I would live in a garret and eat bread and water. I could tolerate mortification and hating myself so long as I was well and truly famous. <laughs> oh, the applause. <laughs> I. I I'm a little faint. Okay. Boris, Boris Alexievich. They're calling for me. It must be time I got packed. I don't want to leave. Such beauty. What bliss. Oh, yes. Uh, you, you see the house on the farther shore? Yes. <laughs> That's my mother's house. Hmm. She's dead. I was born there. My, my whole life I've lived by this island, and, and I know every island. Such a lovely place. And what is this? A seagull. Hmm. Constantin shot it. Such a lovely bird. I really don't want to go. Could you persuade her to stay? <laughs> what are you writing? Mm, just some notes for a plot. An idea for a short story. A girl who has lived her life on the shore of a lake. A girl like you. She loves the lake like a seagull. And there she is happy and free like a seagull. And then one day a man comes by and sees her and having nothing else to do ruins her <laughs> like the seagull. I'm out here. We're staying.
Why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you this because you're a writer. You can use it for material if you want to. Oh, I swear to God, if he'd hurt himself badly, I wouldn't have gone on living another minute. But I made a decision to have courage and rip the love out of my heart. Just rip it out by the roots. How? By getting married to Medvedenko. The school teacher? Yes. Is that necessary? Oh, what's the use of loving someone hopelessly for years on end? Once I'm married, I won't have time for love. I'll have responsibilities. Which at least will be a change from now. Let's have another round. Don't look at me like that. Another. Come on. Women drink more often than you think. Just most prefer to keep it a secret. It's always vodka or cognac. Yes. To your health. <laughs> oh, you're a simple man. It's too bad you're leaving. I don't want to go. Why not ask her to stay? No. She won't stay now. Her son. He's acting rather tactlessly. Mm -hmm. First he tries to shoot himself. Uh-huh. So, now he wants to challenge me to a duel. What? Hi. He pouts and puffs these, these new forms, always preaching them. But surely there is room enough for both, old and new. Why push and shove? Well, jealousy's got something to do with it. Though that's none of my concern. <laughs> oh, my school teacher isn't bright. But he's kind and he's poor and he loves me so much. I pity him and his poor mom. Oh, all my best wishes for your journey. Please don't think badly of us. Mm -hmm. And, oh, thank you for being so nice. Send me all your books. And don't forget to inscribe them. Only don't write anything formal. Simply write, to Maria, ancestry unknown who has no idea why she goes on living on this earth. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. <laughs> this odd or even? Even. Wrong. I only had one seed in my hands. I'm trying to decide whether I should become an actress or not. If only there was someone who could advise me. No one can. Well, this is goodbye. Maybe we won't see each other again, so... Take this to remember me by. It's a little medallion. I asked them to inscribe your initials on this side, and the title of your book, Days and Nights. Oh, gracious, this is a very thoughtful present. Think back on me sometime. I will. <laughs> I'll think about you on that, on that sunny afternoon. Do you remember? One week ago, you wore a light-colored dress. <laughs> and we were talking. And there was a white seagull on the bench. Oh, yes, the seagull. Oh, oh. We have to stop this convolution here. I think it's still coming, but give me two minutes before you leave. Please. Oh, stay here, old man. No. You can't go gallivanting about on visits with your rheumatism. What went out just now? Was that Nina? Yes. Oh, pardon. We've interrupted something. Oh. Days and nights. Packing's done. Pages 121, lines 11 and 12. Oh, I'm worn out. Shall I pack the fishing rods as well? 
Yes, I'll need those, but the books you can give away. <laughs> yes, sir. Pages 121, lines 11 and 12. I, I wonder. Do you keep my books in the house? In Piotr's study, the cabinet bookshelf. 11. Patricia, you really should stay home. Oh, but, but you're all leaving. I, I'll be alone. What would you do in town? Well, nothing in particular, except uh, they're laying the foundation stone for the town hall events like that. I need to get away from here for one hour. Stop living the Philistine life, not live in a stagnant pond. I need to do something instead of being a cigarette holder on a shelf. I've ordered the horses be sent round at one o'clock. We can leave together. Well, <laughs> you should live the way you want and avoid boredom, but just don't make yourself sick. And look after my son. Watch over him and take care of him, mentor him, advise him. I'm leaving, so I still won't know why he shot himself, though. I believe the main reason was jealousy. So, the sooner I get Trigorin away from here, the better. Ah, well, I'm not sure how to say this. Uh, there are other reasons. Oh, it's no mystery. He's, a, he's an intelligent young man living in the country out in the middle of nowhere with no, no job, no prospects, no money. He has no hobbies to keep him busy. The endless holiday embarrasses him. I love him. He's, he's attached to me. But in the end, he feels superfluous here, like a guest to overstay, like a dependent sponge. It's no mystery. He has his pride. He always gives me trouble. Maybe he should apply for a government job. Uh, well, <clears throat> I think that the right thing to do would be to give him a little money. He should be able to dress like a human at least. I mean... Look at the clothes he wears, the same ragged coat for three years now. And I don't think he even owns an overcoat. And, and, and where's the harm in letting him wander to, to go abroad? It doesn't cost that much. I know, but... Well, maybe I could buy him a new suit. Not a trip abroad. No. I can't afford a new suit right now either. I don't have any money. <laughs> I don't! Oh, sure. Yes, of course. Oh, look, I, I apologize, sweetheart. Uh, please don't be angry with me. You have a great heart, a noble heart. Mm. I haven't got any money. Well, um, you could be sure he'd have money from me, had I any. <laughs> I don't have five kopecks to my name. Shamreyev spends my entire pension on managing the farm, the animals the beekeeping till I never see a kopeck out of it. The bees die, the cows die, of course, and they won't even give me a horse. Oh. All right, I, I do have money, but don't forget I'm an actress. I can hardly cover the cost of my wardrobe. Oh, you're very kind, honey. I have great <laughs> respect for you. <laughs> Oh, 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 here we go again. Patricia, uh, uh, I'm Patricia, dizzy. over uh, here. Oh, I feel faint. Oh, oh, uh, oh, help, help, oh. he's ill. Oh, 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 it's all right. It's all right now. There, there, it's all, it's all over, it's all done. See, all better. Don't be frightened, Mama. He has spells all the time, it's nothing dangerous. You should go lie down, Uncle. Oh, yes, uh, I should take a rest. Yes, I should. Um, however, I will be going to town. Uh, I'll take a rest, uh, then go to town. Uh, there you have it. Yes, yes. Here's a riddle. Uh, what goes on four legs in the morning, uh -huh. two legs at noon, three legs in the afternoon? I know, and flat on his back at night. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you. I can walk along. Oh, okay. uh, I got you. Oh, he frightened me. Country life is unhealthy oh. for him. He longs for more. You should think about giving him a small loan. Oh. Be generous and give him a couple thousand so we can live in town for a year. I haven't got any money! I'm an actress, not a banker! Mom! 
Would you change my bandage for me? You do it so well. The doctor's late. Said he'd be here by ten. It's already noon. Come and sit down. Hmm. You look like you're wearing a turban. There was a tramp in the kitchen last night, and he asked what country you're from. Almost all better. Only a tiny scratch is left. <coughs> now, tell me you won't go playing with the guns again after I leave. No, Mama, that was wild desperation and it won't happen again. You have golden hands. <laughs> I remember a long time ago, you were working for a state theater. I was a little child. There was a fight in our courtyard between tenants. There was a washerwoman who was nearly beaten to death, remember? She, they brought her up to our place. She was knocked unconscious. We gave her medicine. Bathed her kids in the bathtub. <laughs> you don't remember that. No. There were two ballerinas. They lived one floor above us. Oh, yes. They would stop in for that coffee. I they were very, very pious. pious. For the last few days, I felt a love for you, the same as when I was a little child. A gentle, devoted love. You're the only family I have left. Why do you let that man stand between us? Oh, you don't understand him. He has a very honorable character. He wasn't so honorable when he found out I was challenging him to a duel. He decided to run away. He's leaving. Oh, rubbish. He's leaving because I'm taking him away. I know you are an intelligent young man, so even if you don't like our being close, I expect you to respect my choice. I respect your choice, and you should respect mine to act towards that character as I wish. An honorable character. Here we are quarreling over him while he's out in the garden cultivating Nina, convincing her that he's a genius. Oh, you enjoy saying these terrible things to me, don't you? I respect him. I must ask you not to speak ill of him in my presence. I have no respect for him. You want me to believe he's a genius. I'm sorry, but I can't lie. His writing makes me sick. Oh, well, that's jealousy. Like all talentless people full of pretension, you do nothing but condemn those with real talent. Must be such a comfort. Real talent. I have more talent than all of you put together. You're all hacks. Just because you've got a strangled hold on legitimacy, you say about anything different from your own way. I'm sorry, but I will not be suppressed. I will not respect you nor him. You're just a pretentious little symbolist. <laughs> and you can go back to your worthless, trashy theater and keep acting in your worthless, second-rate plays. I have never acted in anything second-rate. Leave me alone. You couldn't write a measly vaudeville sketch. You're from Kiev. A petty bourgeois nobody from Kiev. Of all places, the parasite isn't even Russian. Miser! You idle, good-for-nothing riffraff. You nothing. Oh. Stop crying. Don't cry. My darling, beautiful child. <sighs> Forgive your awful mother. Hmm? Forgive me. <sighs> I'm a horrible mother. I wish you could understand. What do I have left? She doesn't love me. I can't write anymore, and my hopes are gone. You mustn't give up hope. I'm taking him away today. She'll be in love with you again. You're all right. 
We've already made up. Yes, Mama. Hmm. And you should make up with him again, too, huh? Before we leave. There's no reason to fight a duel. Am I right? Yes, you're right. Only I couldn't see him again. <sighs> I couldn't talk to him. That would be beyond my strength. He's here. I'll go. The doctor can fix my bandages. Ah, here we are. Pages 121, lines 11 and 12. The carriage will be here soon. If you ever have the need, my life is yours. You ever You're all packed, I hope? Yes, yes. If you ever have the need, my life is yours? Why? Why do I hear this sad call? The appeal of a pure soul. <sighs> if you ever have the need, my life is yours. This girl, she has my heart in a vice. Yes. If you ever have the need, my life is yours. Let's stay. One more day, please. Let's. Let's stay. My dear, I know what is holding you here. Please have some self-control. You're tipsy. It's time to sober up. No. I need you to be sober. You should be wise and sensible enough for this. Please. I'm begging you. Think about this as as my faithful friend. <laughs> you are capable of sacrifice. <laughs> Be my friend. Let me go. Oh, are you so amused by her? Something draws me to her. This may be what I've always needed. <laughs> to fall in love with a provincial girl. How little you know yourself. Some people, they... They walk in their sleep. And while we're here... <sighs> Talking, I am asleep. I am dreaming of her. I am overcome with sweet Empyrean dreams. Let me go. No. Don't talk to me like that. Maurice, I'm an ordinary woman. Maurice, don't torment me. You're scaring me. If you want to, you, you can rise above the ordinary. Love, a young, wonderful, poetical love. It's love that can transport us to a, a higher world of visions. It's our only chance at happiness on earth. I've never felt this love before. Being so occupied as a younger man, I spent all my time on the doorsteps of editors fighting poverty. But, but now that love has arrived, she is beckoning to me. Why should I withdraw? You've lost your mind. Then let me be. Let me go. Why has everyone conspired to torment me today? She doesn't understand. She, she just won't understand. Have I grown so old and ugly you can praise another woman to my face? My beautiful, divine lover, you've lost your mind. Then let me be, let me go. You are the final page of my life story. My joy, my pride, my heaven. If you, if you ever left me, even for an hour I couldn't survive it, I'd go mad. Someone can see us. Oh, let them see. I'm not ashamed to love you. Oh, my treasure. You want to be free to run around, but... I don't want you to. I won't let you. You're mine. This face is mine. These eyes are mine. This silken hair is mine. You belong entirely to me. And your talent is unmatched. Your intelligence. 
You are the greatest author in Russia today, the only hope for Russia. Every line has meaning and truth. One line and you create a living person. The power of your work can be felt by everyone who reads it. Oh, you think this is flattery? Am I lying to you? No, look at me. Look in my eyes and tell me I lie. Only I know your true worth. Only I will ever tell you the truth, my darling. My dearest, you will come with me, won't you? You won't leave me. <laughs> I don't have a will of my own. I never have. How can a woman love someone so spineless? <laughs> so feeble. <laughs> Fine. Take me away. Carry me away. Uh -huh. Just don't ever let me out of your sight. <laughs> now he's mine. <laughs> well, you know, if you, if you need to stay, you certainly could. I could go on. You could join me next week. No. We'll go together. If you like. Yes. Together. Hmm. What's that? I heard a good expression this morning. Virgin forest. I'll use it. Hmm. So, back on the road. Hmm? All those trains, all those stations, terrible food, <laughs> incessant conversations. <laughs> <clears throat> Someone's here. I regret to inform you that the carriage has arrived. It's time to depart for the station. Your train arrives at five after two. And just as a personal favor, madame, if you might inquire after the actors who stalled so, is he alive? Is he well? We used to drink together, and I remember him playing brilliantly in a dynamite play, The Great Mail Robbery. Oh, also on that subject, another tragedy, and it named as my love, also in the same company at the Elizabeth Grad, an honorable man. But there's no need to rush. You have five minutes. Now, once, these two were playing a couple of blackguard conspirators in a melodrama, when all of a sudden, they're discovered, and he cries out, We've been bought! Oh, we've been caught. <clears throat> I brought you some plums for the road. They're oh. sweet. You might get hungry. Oh, Polina, that's kind. Thank you. Oh, oh goodbye. And excuse me if everything wasn't, you know. Oh, everything was lovely, lovely. There's no need to cry. We aren't getting any younger. Oh, no. <laughs> Darling, but what's to be done? Uh, sister, we need to leave or we'll be late. That's, uh, I'm oh. getting in the carriage. Oh, well. I, I'll go with you to the station. Right. Oh. Hey, don't worry, I'll walk. Well, I'm a very fast walker. Good evening, Ben. Here, sir. A ruble, that's for both of you. Oh. Where's Constantin? <laughs> what, we have to leave. Tell him we're leaving. We have to say goodbye now. D write to us if there's time. Uh, goodbye, Boris Alexeyevich. Well, we'll return next summer. We're alive and well. Thank you very much, ma'am. Have a safe journey. All our best. May God protect you. I gave a ruble to the cook. That's for both of you. I think I might have forgot my walking stick. It might be out in the veranda. There you are. <clears throat> We're leaving.
keeping them. Oh. I knew I would see you again. Boris Alexeyevich, I've decided. I'm going to become an actress. Tomorrow I won't be here. I'll leave my father and throw caution to the wind and begin a new life. I'm going to Moscow. Same as you. We'll see each other there. Stay at the Hotel Slavyansky Bazaar. Write to me as soon as you arrive. At Malshinoka Street, Grunovsky House. Grunovsky. I have to go now. Just one more minute, please. Okay. You are so beautiful. I am so happy to think that we will see each other again soon. And I'll get to see these perfect eyes again. And this indescribably beautiful soft smile. <laughs> My darling, your face in this light. You have the face of an angel. Nobody in here. The old man keeps yelling for Kostya, Kostya. Can't live without him. He doesn't want to be alone. The weather's so horrible. Two days of storms. Oh, look how high the waves on the lake are. It's so dark out there. Somebody ought to tear down that old theater stage. It's just hanging out uh, like there, like a big old ugly naked skeleton, the curtain flapping in the wind. The other night, when I was walking by, I could have sworn I heard someone crying. Ugh. So what? Let's go home, Masha. I'm staying here tonight. Our son will be hungry. Oh, nonsense. He has Matronia to feed him. Our child has not seen his mother in three days. Ugh. You've become an incredible nag. At least before you used to spout philosophy. Now all I hear from you is just baby home, home baby. Oh. Let's go, Masha. Uh, you go. I can't. Your father won't give me a horse. He will. Just ask. All right, I'll ask. But you'll come home tomorrow? Yes, I'll be there. Fine. Just leave me alone. Nikolaevich asked me to make up a bed for him here in Kostya's room tonight. Let me do that. Old people are like children again. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be leaving. Good night, Masha. Good night, Mother. Ah, please leave if you're going to go. 
Good night, consented. Who would have predicted that you would become a real writer, Kostya? And the magazines even pay you now. And you've grown to be so handsome. Kostya, my dear, could you be a little nicer to my Mashinka? Leave him alone, Mama. She's a dear. She's precious to me. Women don't need so much, Kostya. Just a kind smile once in a while. I know what that can mean. Now you've made him angry. Why do you pester him? Because I feel sorry for you, Masha. But that's not helpful. I know why your heart is... I see everything. I understand everything. The entire thing is asinine to the last degree. Unrequited love only happens in novels. It's ridiculous. You sit on a bench, waiting, hoping for a change in the winds of fortune, disintegrating. If love flowers in your heart, tell it to get the hell out. <laughs> My husband will be transferred to another district. They promised him. As soon as that happens, I'm gonna rip the love out of my heart. Rip it out by the roots. Cause just playing. He's lonely. Ugh. You know, the important thing is just not to see him all the time. Once Semyon gets his transfer, I'll forget about him in a month. You'll see. Believe me. The entire thing. Nonsense. Uh -huh. There's six mounts to feed in my house. Flour and 70 kopecks to pound. <laughs> Make your head spin. <laughs> oh, you can laugh. Money's a joke to you. Money! A joke! After 30 years of medicine, my friend, 30 years working day and night without a moment's rest, working without peace. And from that, I was able to save 2,000 rubles. Last year, I spent the whole lot on a trip to Italy. Every ruble. Haven't you gone yet? I can't. He won't give me a horse. Uh, I wish to God I'd never seen you. You've changed. Uh, this whole room around a, a parlor is now a writer's study. <laughs> yes. Constantin gets more work done in here. Now he can just go straight out into the garden to think whenever he wants. Where's my sister? Uh, she went to the station to meet Trigor and she'll be back soon. Uh, well, if you sent for her, I must be on my last legs. You see how he is? I'm falling apart and still no medicine. Medicine? Uh, what would you like? Uh, aspirin, bicarbonate of soda, uh, quinine, just say the word. Oh, uh, there he goes again, tormenting me with philosophy again. Was that for me? Yes, for you, Pyotr Nikolaevich. Oh, you are most gracious. <laughs> the bright moon sails, the midnight sky. Oh, oh I, I thought of this plot for Kostya, uh, for a short story. Uh, the title needs to be The Man Who Wanted. Long Kiabulu. Uh, you see, when I was young, I, I, I wanted to become a writer. Well, that didn't work out. I wanted to give uh, beautiful public speeches. My speeches were terrible. <laughs> Listen to how I talk, or this, or this, or this, and so on. <laughs> when I did try to deliver a speech, the best I could do was break a sweat. <laughs> that I did succeed at. I wanted to get married. No such luck. I wanted to live in the city. And see, here I am, dying in the countryside. <laughs> the end. You wanted to be a state councillor, and you did. No, that was not intentional. That just happened. <laughs> Still. At 62 years of age, to be going on and on about a misspent youth <laughs> seems less than magnanimous. <laughs> See how stubborn he is. <laughs> Try to understand. <laughs> I want to live. 
That is ridiculous. All lives must end. It's the law of nature. Uh, says a man who's been everywhere and done everything so that it no longer matters one way or the other. You'll be afraid to die, just like me. <laughs> All animals instinctively fear death. We should overcome this instinct. It would make sense to fear death if you believed in an afterlife which uh, included punishment for your sins. But uh, firstly, you don't believe in such an afterlife. And secondly, what sins have you committed other than working in a government office for 25 years? 28. <laughs> We're keeping Constantin from his work. No, you're not. <laughs> Doctor. If you don't mind my asking, what city was it that you visited that was your favorite? No, oh, Genoa. Why Genoa? <laughs> the spectacle of the crowds in the streets. In the evening, when you leave your hotel, the streets are overflowing with people. You begin to drift with them. No destination in mind, going back and forth. The crowd begins to animate into a living being, and you become part of it. For a moment, you begin to believe in the reality of a, of a universal soul, like the one in your play, Constantin. Remember, I am that universal soul. <laughs> that uh, Nina girl who acted in your play. Whatever happened to her? Where is she? How is she? She's all right, um, so far as I'm concerned. I heard she's been leading an irregular sort of life. That's a long story, Doctor. Tell me the short version. <laughs> she ran away from home, and she got together with Trigorin. Did you know that? Yes. Yes, I did. She had a child. Hmm. The child died. Trigorin fell out of love with her and returned to his former attachments as one might have expected. Of course, he never left his old way, so he continuously fooled them both. <laughs> Typically spineless of him, so far as I know, Nina's personal life has been disastrous. And her acting career? Even worse, it seems. She started off in a summer theater near Moscow. Then she began to tour in the provinces. I used to follow her from place to place in those days. She took on the most difficult roles, but her actions were rough and childish. She couldn't control her voice, and her gestures were abrupt. For a moment, her talent would appear. For example, she had a talent for... dying. <laughs> Loudly. But those were just brief moments. <laughs> So you will admit she has some talent. She may. Although it's hard to say for certain. I went to see her, but she would never see me. The maid never admitted me to her hotel. Her feelings are understandable, and I didn't insist on seeing her. What else can I tell you? When I got home, she began writing to me. Interesting letters. Intelligent. Warm. Though she never complained, I could tell she was unhappy. Every line was a nerve stretched taut, and her imagination also seemed under tension. She would be getting signing her letters. The seagull, like the miller in Pushkin's play, who would say over and over, I'm the raven! Well, she would write over and over, I'm the seagull, and she's here now. Uh, here? What do you mean? She's in town, at the railway station hotel. Just Five down. days, I think she's been there. I wanted to go see her. Masha's already been, but she won't see anyone. Some of swear you saw her in a field a few miles from here. I, I did. She looked like she was heading into town. I said hi and asked when she'd come by to say hello. She said soon. She won't come here. Her father and her stepmother want nothing to do with her. 
They had sensories posted around their estate to keep her from visiting her childhood home. It's one thing to be a philosopher in writing, another one to be one in life. It's the truth. She was a wonderful girl. What? I said she was wonderful, that girl. State Councilor Soren was once even a little in love with her. <laughs> the old fox! <laughs> They must have gotten back from the station. I hear Mama. We all continue to age. We crumble under the weathering elements, but you, Madam, you become younger with the season. Your bright colored dress, your vim, your gray. Oh, you boring old man. Stop trying to jinx me. Masha? You remember me. Did you get married? Yeah, a long time ago. Happy? Oh, my dear. <laughs> Good evening, Adam. What do you say? Like, take it? Good evening, sir. Good to see you. Doctor. Good to see you again. Your mother says that you've forgotten the past, and you are no longer angry with me. And Boris brought the magazine with your new story. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. You're too kind. You've got people intrigued. In Moscow and Petersburg, everyone's talking about you. They all ask me about you. They want to know, what's he like? How old is he? Is his hair dark or light? <laughs> The <laughs> general consensus is that you are no longer young, but beyond that, your identity remains an enigma. Hidden behind your pseudonym, like the man in the iron mask. Uh, will you be staying here long? No. I'm thinking back to Moscow. Probably tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. I've got a story to finish this collection. You know how it is. Oh, but my bad luck. It follows me with this weather. Such a terrible wind. But if it calms down, Annie, I'd like to go out to the lake and get in some fishing. Which reminds me, I wanted to have a look around that place that you, that you staged your play. Do you remember that? I have an idea for a story, and I needed to refresh my memory of the setting and the location, so... I thought tomorrow morning after I got to do some fishing, I could go out to the lake. Papa, give my father a horse. He needs to go home. Oh, uh, horse nonsense. What is this needs to go home? You know they just came back from the station. They can't go out again directly. A different horse, then. Don't you have a different horse. Uh, what's the point of talking to you? Uh, I'll walk. I'll walk. Walk back? In this weather? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, please. It's only four miles. I, w I wouldn't have bothered if not for the child. Um. Good night, Masha. Good night, Mother. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. I hope he survives the journey. Then give him a Oh, he can walk. He's not a general. Please, ladies and gentlemen, stop wasting time. We'll be called to dinner soon. For autumn nights like this, we always play lotto. See, this is the same set we used as children. My dear mother used to play with us mm. when we were children. <laughs> oh, we'll sit here and play till supper. Truth be told, it's a boring game, but... He read his own story, but get the used pages to of mine are uncut. Do you want to play? No, thank you, Mama. I'm not in the mood for some reason. All right. Everyone ante up. Ten kopecks. Doctor, would you kindly ante for me? Yes, of course. There you go, Doctor. Everyone paid up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, here we go. Twenty-two. Oh, right here. <laughs> three. Ah, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you cover the three? Yes. Eight. Eight. Eighty-one. Mm. Ten. Oh, not so fast. You should have seen the reception I had in Kharkov. They made me dizzy. 
34. A group of students arranged the ovation. They gave me three baskets of flowers and two bouquets. Look at this. Ooh, that is something. <laughs> 50. Uh, 50 even. Yes. I wore the most exquisite dress you can imagine. People can say what they want about me, but they have to admit I know what to wear. Yes, you do. He's in anguish. Those nasty reviewers taking their shots again. Why does he pay any attention? He's had some bad luck. It can be hard for a young writer to find his voice. But his stories, they're strange and vague sometimes, and they can be so incoherent. Like there is a lunatic raving in them, but yet there are no real living people in his stories. Eleven. Patricia, are you bored sitting there? Asleep. <laughs> Councillor Soren is sleeping. Seven. So, Ninety. If I lived out here by this lake, I might have trouble writing also. But perhaps I would then just give up writing and fish. <laughs> Twenty-eight. Yes. Catching a perch. Or a pike. Oh. <laughs> what oh. bliss. <laughs> yes. I believe in Constantin. Hmm. I do. He's got talent. His, his words make images and his stories are colorful. I can feel them working on me. Hmm. It's just a shame he has nothing distinctive to say. Uh, <laughs> His words make impressions, but nothing more, and one impression can only take you so far. Oh, Irina, aren't you proud that your son has become a writer? Mm-hmm. I haven't actually read any of his writing yet. <laughs> There's never enough time. Hmm. Twenty-six. Yes. No. <laughs> you know, we still have that item you left here kicking around. What item? The seagull that Constantin shot. You asked me to have it stuffed, remember? No, I don't remember doing that. 66. One. It's so dark out. Why do I feel anxious? Because you close the door, the wind is too strong. 88. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've won. <laughs> bravo, bravo. This man is lucky. Let's have supper, yes. shall we? Our celebrity yes. has beaten since breakfast. Constantin, leave your manuscripts. Come and have supper with us. No, thank you. No, I'm not hungry. No. Patricia, time for supper. Oh, they adored me in Kharkov. <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, I talk big when it comes to new forms in art, but recently I started to realize that little by little my writing has worn down into cliches. The banner on the fence heralded. Her pale face framed by dark hair. Heralded. Framed. It's such an amateur crap. I'll start with the hero wakes up in the rain and then I'll just throw out the rest. The description of the moon lighting up the land at night is so precious. Trigorin has his technique set. It's easy for him. The neck of a broken glass bottle leaning down on the dam. The black shadow of a mill wheel. There's your moonlit night right there. And what do I use? A shimmering light. The mute glimmer of stars, the distant ring of a piano dying in the quiet, fragrant air. It's 
painfully unnecessary. The more and more I go on, it's not the forms that count, old or new, it doesn't matter. What is, is writing from the soul with no thought for form. Who's there? Nina. Nina, is that you? All day, I knew you'd be here today! <laughs> My sweet and beautiful Nina, let's not cry. No, we won't. Someone else is here? There's no one. Lock the doors. No one will come in. I know it is, but I am just here. Lock the doors. Uh, this one doesn't lock, so... There. Don't be frightened. No one will come in. Let me look at you. <laughs> it's warm inside. That's good. This room was a parlor before. Have I changed a lot? Yes. You seem a little thinner and your eyes are a little larger. It's so strange to be seeing you. Why didn't you let me before? Why, why didn't you come here earlier? I know you've been at the hotel for almost a week every day. I went to you several times and I stood below your window like a beggar. I'm afraid you'd hate me. My dream every night was you looking at me but not recognizing my face if you only knew. I've been here by the lake many times since I arrived, but I couldn't come inside. Let's sit down. Here we can sit and talk. Just the conversation. Here it's nice and warm and cozy. Oh. That wind. There's a Tuganian passage. Happy the man on such a night who has his own roof and a place beside the fire. I am the seagull. What was I thinking for? Oh, Tuganian, yes. And may the Lord help all homeless wanderers. Not important. You know, you it's don't need important. to. Crying makes me feel better. I haven't cried in two years. Last night I went down to the garden to see if our theater was still there. It was. And I began crying for the first time in two years. And I felt better. Everything clarified for me. See? Stop now. So tell me, you've become a writer. You're a writer, I'm an actress. We were both pulled into the maelstrom, you and me. I was just like a happy little child. I would wake up in the morning and I was in love with you. And I dreamt I'd become famous, and now... Tomorrow, early, I have a train to catch down to get let's third class with all the peasants. And upon arrival, I'll be putting up with unwelcome attentions of wealthy businessmen who claim to love art. It's a rude, harsh life. Hey, why are you going to yell at
I did hate you. I cursed your memory, and I tore up your photographs. Even so, I knew that my soul was bonded to yours forever. I can't not love you, Nina. I can't. Ever since you left and my work began to be published, my life has been a complete hell. I can't bear up. I don't feel young any longer. I feel 90 years old. I call for you. I kiss the ground you once walked in. I remember, I remember your soft <laughs> smile shining on the best years of my life. Why are you telling me this? Why? I'm alone. I have no warmth. No connections to others. I feel cold as if I live in a grotto. My writing is dry and worthless. Stay, stay here, stay here with me, Nina, or let me go with you, I beg of you. No, my carriage is waiting for me at the gate. No, no, you stay here, don't. Come with me. Give me some water. Where are you going? To town. So, in the Goliathness here? On Thursday, my uncle, he got very sick, so we sent her by telegram. She's here. Why would you say you kiss the ground that I walk on? I should be killed. So tired. I need a rest. Just a rest. He's here. What's the difference? He has no faith in a life in the theater. He laughed at my dreams and eventually I no longer believed in them myself. I lost hope. Being in love is difficult and being jealous. And the constant fear for my little one. I was cheap and worthless. I couldn't act to save my life, my hands, what to do, how to stare. I, I had no control over my voice. You don't know this feeling of knowing you're a bad actress. I am the seagull. Remember how you shot the seagull? But a man arrives, sees her, and ruins her because he has nothing better to do.
walking over here today singing to myself I can feel my soul strengthening and growing daily and I understand coach I understand that in the end and writing or acting is the same thing fame doesn't count it isn't what I dreamt of What is strength to continue how bad of the surface? You you continue to believe. Oh, I believe and that helps me. When I think of my vacation, then I don't fear life. I don't believe. I don't know what my vocation is. You found your way in life. You know your direction. I drift through images and chaos and dreams. I don't know the use of my work who could possibly need it. Dr. Chagoran, don't tell him about me. I love him. I love him. I love him more than before. I, I love him. I love him. Desperately. happy life with feelings like little flower petals. <laughs> Rem remember this? People, lions, eagles, and partridges. <laughs> that looked here the keys to the spiders. <laughs> the silent fish who dwell in the sea and the starfish and creatures invisible. <laughs> All living things and life itself. All living things have come to an end. They're sad, a lot of rounds complete. And the pitiable moon has lent her life to no avail. The, the cranes no longer wake in the meadows with their cries. And the linden groves no longer hung with a flight of beetles. I hope no one sees her in the garden and then tells Mama.
Mama might get upset. When I was in Venice, ah, ah, that is a city, you know, when, what, wh why is the door blocked? Welcome to the obstacle course. Huh. Well, the beer and red wine you can put on the table and we'll have our drinks during the game. And you can bring in the tea now, please. Let's get Here, this is what I was telling you about. You asked me to do this. No, I don't remember. I can't remember. Oh, 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 oh what was that? What oh, no, was no, that? No, no, no worries, no worries. Something must have exploded in my medicine bag. No worries, oh, it's a nuisance. Two ago, uh, I had read this article. Um, it's from America. <laughs> Lots of human interest in this story, and I wanted to talk to you about it. Um, ah, uh, yes. Find a way to get Arena out of here. Constantin has just shot. Thank you. 